There are seven major routes taking you to Santiago de Compostela and over 100 smaller ones. So which ones should you choose? Stay tuned to learn more and to help you make the correct choice for your Camino. The seven most popular Camino routes, arranged according to their popularity and the number of pilgrims that use them are Camino Frances with 54.6% of all pilgrims taking that route. Next is the Camino Portuguese, the central route, 20.8%. And then the Camino Portuguese coastal route gets 6.4%. So quite a few taking the Portuguese route. Okay, then we have some of the smaller ones. There's the Camino del Norte, which is 5.4% of pilgrims on that one. The Camino Primitivo, 4.5%. Camino Anglais, 4.5%. And then the Via de la Plata with 2.6%. I'm often asked, what is the best Camino route for beginners? My answer is either the Camino Frances or the Camino Portuguese from Porto. Now, the reason for this is that these routes are the most popular ones because they have a very well-developed infrastructure. In other words, you're gonna find everything you need on these routes. You're gonna get accommodation, food, lots of people, support, whatever help, assistance you're going to need, you're gonna find it on these routes. The downside is that because they're so popular during peak pilgrim season, they're really crowded. The hardest Camino, in my opinion, is the Via de la Plata. It's a very long route with long distances between the towns. Also, it gets really hot in the summertime, and so you have to carry a lot of water and food with you because in between the towns, there's nothing. And for the most beautiful, again, in my opinion, I like the Camino del Norte, the Camino Primitivo, and the Camino Anglais. These Caminos are all in the north area of Spain, and the routes follow the sea. And if you really like following the ocean, the sea, these are great routes. But hands down, my all-time favorite Camino is the Spiritual Variant, which branches off of the north end of the Camino Portuguese. I've walked this one several times, and if I'm in the area, I'll scoot over and walk it any time. After you've walked the major Caminos and you're officially a perpetual pilgrim, you might want to try some of the smaller Caminos. There are too many of these to count, but in Spain alone, there are over 100. Some of them are just a day or two, allowing you passage from one Camino to another. Others are several days and feed into one of the major Caminos. And then there are a couple that are specific Caminos dedicated to a saint or to a shrine. They have a beginning and an ending that is different from Santiago de Compostela. Also, they offer the pilgrim, upon completion of their Camino, a special Compostela that is just for that Camino. One of these unique Caminos is the Camino Teresiano. This is also called the Cradle to the Grave Camino. It begins in Avila, where St. Teresa of Avila was born, and it ends in Alba de Tormas, Spain. The six to eight day Camino traces a path through the area where she did her saintly work. 
At the end of the Camino, you present your pilgrim passport at the pilgrim's office and you receive a very special Compostela. Here in my office at our home in Arizona, I have framed on the wall various Compostelas that I've collected over the years. And let me go around over here to the one from the Camino Teresiano. I'll zoom in on it and you can see it's really quite lovely. Down the bottom you have a stamp from Avila, the place where Teresa was born. And then there's another stamp from Salamanca, which is just a few kilometers west of the conclusion of the Camino. And then, of course, you have the uh, Alba de Torma stamp, as well as the Camino Teresiola stamp. Quite lovely. Another special Camino is the Padron Camino, which begins in Villanova de Orosa. It travels up the River Ola and then concludes in Padron. This is the route that the remains of St. James traveled en route to Santiago. After you reach Padron, you go to the Pilgrim Office, where they provide you with a map and a special Pilgrim Passport. You navigate the village and see all the various sites on the map and obtain a stamp at each place. When you return to the Pilgrim Office with all your stamps, you receive the Padron Compostela. Again, back to the wall so you can see what it looks like. That's the Padronia Compostela. And then let me spin over here and you'll see another one. There's another Compostela from Padron. If you're walking the Camino Frances or Camino Madrid Levante, be sure to stop in Sahagún. Go to the cathedral, which is on the way out of town, and present your pilgrim passport to receive your halfway Compostela. This is what the document looks like. It's very nice calligraphy. They write your name on it. It's stamped with several seals and printed on really nice cardstock. It's always nice meeting other pilgrims off the Camino. In our new location, just northwest of Phoenix, I've been meeting other pilgrims through the American Pilgrims on the Camino, Valley of the Sun chapter. If you aren't familiar with this organization, I highly encourage you to check it out. Here is the web address for the parent organization, and then also the address for my local chapter, Valley of the Sun, here. Through social media, I've gotten to know some of the people in this chapter, and one friend, Kurt, walked his first Camino just this last year. So I thought it would be very interesting to invite him over and ask him some questions about it. What was it like? How did you figure out what Camino you wanted to do? What's your background? So this afternoon, over some really good cheesecake and hot tea, we sat down in my dining room and had a lovely visit. So, here it is. I'd like to introduce you to a Camino Pilgrim friend. This is right. Kurt. Uh, Kurt, would you please tell us a little bit about you? What do you do here in Phoenix and what got you interested in the Camino? Well, I'm retired Air Force. Once upon a time, I was stationed out at Luke Air Force Base here in Phoenix. Uh, served 22 years on active duty. Retired 2004 and uh, worked a variety of part-time jobs. And uh, now I'm currently uh, at Barnes & Noble part-time. It's my hobby job. Gets me out of the house. And so 
As far as the Camino went, uh, traditionally, the la well, like a lot of people that walked it, uh, was because of the movie The Way. And um, so it made the bucket list. And, um, you know, I kept saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And for whatever uh, reason, I didn't. And then um, I followed, I, I was following a friend of mine uh, from Montreal on her Camino Francais. And um, out of the blue, my ex-wife calls me and says, do you know the El Camino de Santiago? And I said, it's on my bucket list. And she says, cool, we're going to do it. <laughs> and we did. We um we booked it in September. We walked from May 4th to June 10th. Um, at the end of it, we spent four days in Madrid, which was beautiful. So why did you choose the Camino Frances? It seemed to be the traditional route, and that was the movie The Way followed the Frances. So um, it just seemed like the natural first uh, Camino. And you started in San Juan? We did. Uh, we flew into Madrid, um, trained to Pamplona. And then from Pamplona, we took the bus to St. Jean. So my next question is, you did your first night in Roncesvalles. Yes. And so what was your impression of that first day of walking from St. Jean Pietroport to Roncesvalles? I was questioning my sanity, to be honest. Uh, it was a brutal walk. Uh, just, And some of it had to do with the weather, not just the uh, continuous uphill march because we had freezing rain and uh, a little bit of snow uh -huh. yep. so um yeah my uh my traveling companion uh she thought i was going too slow so she went on ahead and uh, i walked with a, a a gentleman named andrew from sydney australia so uh -huh. andrew and i trudged oh boy yeah i've walked that one a couple of times and and yeah i've always had either fog or mist or rain or mm. snow. I've never seen sun up there. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that time of year, because it was, like I said, it was May 4th, that was our first day out, so. But then the next few days after that, what was that like? The weather was glorious. We got really lucky. I think out of the whole 40 days that we were there, uh, we probably got rained on three, maybe four times. Ah. So it, it was it was really nice. I only wore long pants three days. I couldn't have asked for better weather. Or, I mean, it was it was truly glorious. It, they did have a heat wave at the end of it, but you know you just get up earlier and beat the heat. Plenty of water. Another reason for taking the the French was um, the amount of amenities and support. So we'd start our morning with breakfast, usually around seven, and by the time we walked five k or something like that. There was a cafe and yep. cafe con lychee. Uh huh. So yeah. <laughs> so my next question. Okay, you've walked your 35, 38, 40 days. Mm -hmm. You're almost to Santiago. Oh. You go down that little street. You walk around oh. the cobblestones. You go into the tunnel, and all of a sudden, there you are in Plaza del Obradorio. It was unbelievable. The, the piper was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, just hearing the pipes, you could hear them from, you know, a couple blocks away. So, and then the people that you'd met along the way, that was that was the best part seeing those guys. Yeah, because you know your Camino family. My Camino family. Yeah. One of the special things about the Camino is the family that you that you acquire over right. your weeks of walking. Okay, now my next question for you: uh -huh. If someone were to come up to you and say, "I'm thinking about walking a Camino," which one would you suggest? What should I walk? What would your answer be? Uh, I think it would be based on, first of all, time. Uh huh. I mean, if not everybody can afford to take 40 days off of work or 30 days, depending on how fast you wanted to move along the French. The Portuguese from Porto, uh -huh. it's definitely doable in a relatively short time uh -huh. where most people can accommodate with their uh, vacation schedule. I would also uh, cons take into consideration somebody's physical condition. I mean, not everybody's capable of doing a full 500 miles or 600 miles, depending on if you walk it to the land's end. Budget-wise, too. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. people are very concerned about how many euros a day. The, my experience is, you know, you had a budget and then you just went, oh, hell with it. You know, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I'm going to do it my way. So, yeah. What is your next Camino going to be and when? Uh, Definitely doing next spring again. Uh, I thought the time that we walked from uh, May uh, to June was good. Um, 
I want to do some portion of the French, but I want to miss that last part through yeah, Surya. Surya, uh huh. That was uh, I still yes. I still remember this guy. His cologne was so strong I could smell him from fifty meters. And then the high school kids blasted music, and all of a sudden you're just like. What the heck happened? Where yeah, you were the last three or four weeks in all alone, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, yeah. you're in downtown Camino. <laughs> but uh, the beauty of that was we were in such good shape because we were toward the end of it. Uh -huh. We could lose those guys on the first hill. Oh, yeah. I mean, you just blow by these guys. <laughs> it was There was some solace in that. But, I mean, when you hit the restaurants from that portion in, uh -huh. There were long lines, oh, and yeah. you know you couldn't get you know, get your customary. I have to have my coffee, so you know. Uh -huh. So yeah, if I heard that if you go Pomperita South, you can uh -huh. you can bypass that. Yeah, that that would take you down through the um, Camino and the Arno. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. So that's an option, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll get everything set up by the fall and then leave in May of, right. of next year. Yeah, so that'll be cool. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, to share your experience, your expertise with us. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate the words you have to say. Well, thanks for having me. It was really fun finally meeting you after yeah. following you on uh, Facebook and uh, other media sources. So, yeah, no, right. cool. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Kurt, for sharing your story with us. If you have a story to tell or know someone who does and wouldn't mind sharing with us, please contact me. Meeting other pilgrims, sharing stories, and keeping the Camino alive continues to make it a very special place for all of us. As you know, following each of these videos, I always close with some music that is appropriate for the topic, and I bring in my husband, Mark, to help out. For the selection this week, I have arranged the music of a Celtic blessing that you're sure to recognize. Please enjoy.